Among dried fruits, none inspires a gut reaction like prunes. Eating them is one way to kickstart a lethargic gastrointestinal system. High in fibre, sweet and chewy, prunes are actually dried plums, which have been around since the start of civilization. How about that old fruit? Prunes have been found in ancient Egyptian tombs, placed there to snack on during the journey to the next world. Fast forward to today and people are still knocking them back. They can be added to salads, cakes and even savoury dishes. It all starts with the growing stock. Not all varieties of plums are suitable for drying. At this Californian orchard, they grow the Darjong plum, a European variety. Harvesting machines shake the trees by the trunks and the fruit rains down onto a conveyor, which delivers it to bins. They then transport the plums to the receiving plant. They unload them directly into a washing system. Debris floats to the surface to be removed. The plums exit onto a table that vibrates. This is to distribute them evenly so they land on trays in equal amounts. A paddle overhead levels them on the trays. The plums are now ready to dry. They're about 80% water when they enter the dryer. But 16 hours of heat exposure brings the moisture content down to 19%. Plums were once sun-dried as a means of preservation, but a modern industrial dryer produces more uniform results. The dried plums travel under a vacuum that sucks out sticks or stems. Then the prunes travel to a shaking conveyor with a lot of different sized holes. The first holes are the smallest and they become progressively larger in order to sort the prunes by size. They fall into separate bins below. The smallest fruit will be used for breakfast or dice product, whilst the largest prunes will end up as snack food. Preserved by drying and now sorted, they can be stored for months ready for processing. At the processing plant, the prunes head into a super-sized steam cooker. They spend 18 minutes cooking in there. The steam cooking partially rehydrates them, softening the prunes so the pits or stones can be removed more easily. They must now remove the pits before the prunes start to lose moisture and become too dry for the job to be done efficiently. The prunes head towards the pitting operation and flow into five lanes. Each one leads to a separate pitting lane. With five different pitting lanes, they'll process hundreds of prunes a minute. Clamps close around the prunes, securing them for knives to push out the pits. The pits will be ground up and added to animal feed. The pitted prunes make a soft landing on a rubber conveyor, which takes them into a laser detection center. The laser finds pits or pit fragments and relays the information to a computer. The computer activates air jets that blast out the unwanted material. It happens so fast, it's all a blur. On another oscillating conveyor, the prunes bounce towards a large drum. The drum revolves slowly to gently toss the prunes as they pump in a preservative, flavorings and oil. The prunes absorb the ingredients as they tumble around in the drum. At this point, they sample the moisture content of the prunes once every 15 minutes. The technician grinds and compresses some prunes into a disc. She drives an electrode into it to gauge the moisture. It should be between 28 and 32 percent. Now it's time to wrap things up. Suctioning arms open the bags and feeders dispense a precise amount of pitted prunes into them. A heated device then melts the ends of the plastic bags together to seal them. They produce 120 bags of prunes a minute at this factory. So adding some fibre to your diet shouldn't be a problem. Nice.